Welcome back. This is Dan Havey with CF Ninja Hacks. And in this video, we're going to talk about what I think are two of the coolest things that ClickFunnels has put into ClickFunnels 2.0. And that is the breadcrumbs for each one of the elements, rows, sections, everything on the page, and also the layout tab up here at the top. So let's take a look at the layout up here first. So we just click on the layout. And what you're going to see is it breaks down the entire what we would call in coding and JavaScript, we would refer to this as the DOM or the document object model because it shows every single one of the HTML elements that you use to put together your page. So it shows the section and then the row rows inside of the sections you can see all the various rows here and we got another section down here at the bottom and inside of the rows you have your columns and then in this case here an image and of course as you move your mouse down the page it also highlights the elements as you go along right down the page and even when you get to something that is an actual element itself it will highlight it in orange whereas the other ones are all highlighted in blue and a section is actually green you can only see like right down here at the bottom you can see the line for the next section and that one is in green so it keeps the color coordination as well going through the entire process and I also like the way they come in and out just like you would in HTML as you indent, as you put one box inside of another box inside of another box, a, a section and then a row and then your columns and then your elements. And when you write that in HTML, you indent them. So you get a structure that looks like that, which is, you know, think of in terms of like, a um, oh what am I thinking back from school days where you would have your table of contents and it would indent and go in and out um, not table of contents but you know where I'm talking about where you you indent it like that when you're doing your term papers in school is about the only instance where I can think of where we use that kind of structure but you can see it over here beautifully on the right hand side and there's a couple other things here so we can say here show everything or we can say only show the sections. So it shows each one of the individual sections. And the cool part about this now is let's say I want to move this section above this other section right here. I can do that, or at least I should be able to do that. Let's see if I can get it to happen here. Come on. Um, I thought this was supposed to work like this. Yeah, there we go. It takes a little bit of fussing with it, but you can also come over here and click on the three dots and you can just say move down. So that's probably a much easier way to do it. Just click on it and move down, or you can actually come into the page here, of course, itself and click on the up button here or the down button for moving your uh, moving your sections, but also you can do the exact same thing on moving rows around as well. You can move this row up and then move this one down and uh, on and on back and forth. But now let's go back into the layout. And so you can move them around by pulling them. Like I said, you can do rows, sections, columns, elements. So we can just show the elements on the page as well. And again, you can move those around. Over here on the right hand side, we can say, do we want to see this on desktop or mobile or neither? And you just click on it right there. And now it's no longer showing on desktop. So if we go back into desktop, and what did I turn off? I turned off an image, which I think was up here at the top. And so now we'll turn that image back on, and there it is, back on the page. Same thing with mobile. We can turn it off on mobile, and then it says desktop only right there. And you can do all this right here from the sidebar. So let's turn everything back on and so let me see I showed that we can move things around here's another cool thing that you can do is so we got this image right here I can actually grab a hold of this image right there and drag it out onto the page and move it somewhere onto the page so I just took this image that was up here pulled it out of the layout and dropped it onto the page now my question is is can I reverse that can I take this out of here pull it over into the sidebar and drop it in over here. And the answer is no on that. So I can just grab it on the page as well and pull it up there too. So again, a lot more functionality, a lot more flexibility on how you can do things in here. But then let's see what else we can do here. We can go here and we can click on our settings and go into the settings for, in this case, our section. And we'll come back out to our layout. And let me see here, let's go to this image 
we can duplicate that image. So we can click that right there. We can say, let's rename this image. And so right here in this box, we can call this our test image. Oops, it's not typing. Let me see here, image test. We'll do that, click the little check mark. Now we change that image right there. But also now if we go inside of here and we click on this, we come down to the bottom and we're kind of off the bottom of the page here for some reason, it changed it right here because this is actually where the title of this goes. And let's just put the words demo here now at the end and click on update. And then we'll come back into our layout and now it's Im image test or whatever, you see what it says there, image test demo right there that we now updated. We of course can move this up and down and then we can delete it all right from the layout on the right hand side here. And I think that's pretty much it for the layout. But again, it's just super cool, lays out every single element. You could do all kinds of stuff, move things around, um, show only the ones you want to see and get access to the columns easy as well. And so you can come down here. Sometimes the columns are real tough to get a hold of. And so you just come in here, you say, I just want to see the columns and you can go into each one individually, click on it, open it up and work on it. So now the next thing I want to show you is um, the breadcrumbs and you've seen this before, but I think it's really cool to have these breadcrumbs on here too for each one of the elements because a lot of times again, like I just said, it's hard to get into the column or sometimes it's hard to get into a row or something because if you have like absolutely no padding on any of your elements here, so let's go down to like zero padding on here and on this image. Let's see, did we have some padding on the image? No, we did not. And let's go to the section and let's put zero padding on this section. And I think we had another row up here and I will get to what I'm gonna show you here in a second, is a lot of times now, how do you get to some of these elements? Like this one here now is tucked up behind here. And so I can get to the gear, but just, well, actually the gear is over here. So, but I'm having trouble getting into that one. This one I can get to just fine. But again, some of the times it's hard to get to these things. And then also uh, what I've noticed is sometimes when you go to click on the column settings, it disappears. Well, because of these breadcrumbs, we can just come in here and I'll click on an image or some other element way deep into the page. Let's just go here, click on the gear. And what it does, or, you know, we want to click on an element deep inside of a section, inside of rows, columns, whatever. And then we can backtrack out of here. So we can click here and it takes us to the column and we can edit the column. We can click here. We can edit the row and the section all the way back out to the body itself on the page where we can put in anything we want for the background on this page. So again, I think it's pretty cool that you're able to have access to it so easily by just clicking on these items at the top and being able to flow through and much, much easier than in 1.0 to be able to get to all the elements. Oh, and that's one other thing. Let me show you on the layout is one of the problems always with 1.0 is let's say you had a section hidden. Well, you couldn't see anything inside of the section if you hit it. You know, you had the thing up here at the top and you click on a section and you would say hide it. Well, once you did that, the rows and the columns and the elements next to it in those drop downs would disappear. You couldn't see it at all. But I could come into this element right here now in this section and let's just say we're going to hide that lay hide that section well here it is now it's hidden you can see the uh the mobile and the desktop devices here are now grayed out they're no longer blue but you can still see all of the elements inside of here and so i could come in and let's say i needed to for some reason change um you know just change something about this headline maybe for some reason i needed to come in and I needed to grab the CSS ID selector for this headline, or I needed to change the title, or maybe I needed to come into that particular he um, that headline element again, and I needed to change an attribute or something because we're writing some code and we want that element to be able to appear at some point, but right now it's hidden. 
And so in order to do that, we can easily still access everything without having to go in and turn the section back on again like we would normally have to do in 1.0. We got to make it visible, then go in there and edit it, and then remember to go back out and hide it once again. So again, one more reason why this layout is just so super cool. But that's it for, that, for this video here. Hope you like the layout and the breadcrumbs as much as I do. And if you have any questions, just let me know.